dumb like those that worship idols. Father, you have exposed, revealed yourself to us. That this relationship is about you because you are the one that brought us where we are. It's not that we are so good because nobody, nobody anywhere can satisfy your righteous requirement. But Father, in your mercy, you picked us. And Father, you, make, you made us your own. You made us your children. You made us have this wonderful relationship with you. Father, we don't take it for granted. We are so grateful. Daddy, we thank you. Thank you, Father, for who you've been. And Father, thank you, to your, thank you because of your faithfulness to us. Father, in many ways we have not been faithful. In many ways we don't even do the right thing. But Father, you've not abandoned us. Father, you've been faithful to us. Father, we just bless you and we thank you for the privilege. We thank you for the privilege of calling you Father. Because that's the best thing that can happen to anybody on earth. That we have you as our Father. Father, we thank you for that privilege. Father God, we are just asking today, again, as your word comes forth, Father, reveal yourself to us. Reveal yourself more to us. Father, you know our different locations. You know our different places where we are in our journey with you. But Father, we know, because we wish, I shared this morning that you are inexhaustible. Wherever we are, you can bring us higher to you. So Father, that's our desire today, that you bring us higher to you, Father. That you make us know you more today. And Father, that we also understand who we are, so that we know how to deal with your, the enemy. We know how to deal with opposition. Father, help us today, O oh God. Open the eyes of our heart. Cause us to understand. Cause us to know. Father God, thank you today. Thank you, most high God. Thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We've been talking about our authority, authority series. That's what we've been doing. And I just want to um, a short recap, just as my brother was saying this morning, that everything that is happening to us is what we allow, that is allowed in heaven. Praise the Lord. And there are certain things we cannot ask God. Those prayers are not prayers. Because we learn more. We, uh, God has given us authority. As we read in Psalm 115, he has given us to be in charge here. So it's either we are in charge or we allow the enemy to be in charge. But God cannot take charge what he has told us to take charge. Praise the Lord. And when we understand this, we understand now that everything about the earth, God has given to the children of men, the workings, the demonic, everything that is about here. So if we see that the world is not going the way it should be, it's because some people have abdicated their responsibility. Praise the Lord. The children of men are not doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, I heard a preacher saying that um, uh, terrorist attack, all these bad things that are happening is because the church has, is not taking their place. And it's true. Praise the Lord. Because if we are where we are, the whole world, we will not even allow evil. Before, there was nothing like, some evils cannot even be heard about because there's a restraint. But as the church was getting colder and darker, then the, the enemy camp was getting stronger and bolder. But I will believe God that God will change everything in Jesus' name. So last week we talked briefly about um, how we also allow the enemy into our lives by sin, praise the Lord, by our complacency and by the sins we allow. And I remember emphasizing that it's not that when we sin, it doesn't change our, our father's relationship with us because he loves us unconditionally, but it opens us up. That's what we discussed last week. It opens us for satanic attack. It gives the enemy inroad into our lives. So because if God is the only factor on earth, then we don't have problem. But because we have an enemy, and we discussed, we showed last week, when, when we now open ourselves, when we sin and when we do certain things, because we read that where there is strife, the Bible says that there is confusion and every evil work. We, we learned it last week. Every evil work, not some every evil work. So there are some things that we do that gives the enemy inroad into our lives. Praise the Lord. So if we block those things and realize our authority, and that's what we want to learn today, then the enemy cannot mess us up anymore in Jesus' name. Mm. So um, I want you to uh, put a Hebrews 2, 5 to 8. You remember we read uh, Psalm 115, and we said that God has put us in charge. So we want to read Hebrews 2, 5 to 8. It says, But unto the angels had he not put the, the world I did not put in subjection the world to come. Whereof we speak. So, first of all, God did not give the angels authority on earth. Hello? 
God did not give the angels authority on earth. He did not give the angels. He gave it to man. As we read in Psalm 115. He says, Whereof we see, but one in a certain place testified, What is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you visit him? You know, we read this place last week. He said, You made him a little lower. That, that you're mindful of him, that you visited him, that you made him a little lower than the angels. And we said that King James translated that in angels. It means you made him a little lower than Elohim, God himself. That's the proper translation, the proper rendering. You crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hand. That's, the Bible is talking about what God did with man. God set man over the works of his hands. And I just want to emphasize here, do we all understand that Satan is a created being? Satan is a created being. He's created. So he's part of God's hand work. Do we understand that? He's part of God's hand work. So in that place is saying that God put man, in, uh, he put everything, he crowned him glory and honor and set him over the works of your hand. Okay? So if Satan is, the angels are over, uh, are the works of God's hand, God has put us in charge of them. Satan included, because if sometimes we try to tend to remove him away out of the angels. He's just an angelic being. And then you have put all things in subjection under his feet. Praise the Lord. Again, in subjection. Last week, we mentioned that God, the whole idea of about authority, that God raised us up. Praise the Lord. He raised us up. We are going to check that scripture again. Ephesians 1.20 and Ephesians 2.15. Let me finish reading this before you go there. God raised us up. He didn't leave us down. He raised us up. When he raised Jesus from the dead, he raised us up with him. So he put everything in subjection under his feet. Talking about man here. And I want to emphasize that Jesus is the son of man. There's a reason why he kept emphasizing it in the Bible. If you remember, he keeps saying son of man, son of man. So he says... For in that he put all things in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put on the earth. He left nothing out. That's what that place is saying. Only now we, see, we don't see everything put under him because we are not doing what we are supposed to do. But he left nothing out except and everything is under the feet of Jesus. Now, if everything is under the feet of Jesus, go to um, um, Ephesians 1.20. If everything is under the feet of Jesus, praise the Lord. And you remember we talked about last week that we are the body of Christ. We emphasize this several times, that we are the body of Christ. So if Christ is the head, we are the body. The head and the body do not separate, praise the Lord. So if the head is sitting in a place, the body is sitting in that place with the head. The head doesn't stay on its own, praise the Lord. So one trait it says, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead, we emphasize that this word raised from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. So where is Jesus sitting now? He at the right hand of God. Praise the Lord. Now go to that Ephesians 2.5. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God. The 2.5 says, even when we were dead in sins, that word raised is the same as quickened. Had quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. If you go to, to Ephesians 2.1-10, to he says we are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now go to Ephesians 21 and 22. That one, 21 and 22. We are seated somewhere. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 1, 21 and 22. He says, far above. That's where Jesus is seated. Far above. Are you seeing this? Because part of the problem we've had as Christians is that we live to God. Even our prayers sometimes, we tell God to come and deal with the enemy. And he cannot do it. That's why some prayers are not effective. We cannot tell God to do what he has already told us to do. Praise the Lord. No matter how religious that prayer is, it's not hitting heaven. It's not making impact. And that's why some of us, we are dealing with things and it's not shifting. Because they, they say, wait, God has put these things. And that way we have to follow it step by step to see the action that God, is, uh, God wants us to achieve. So it says, God, Jesus is seated in the right hand of the Father, far above. Do you see that? Far above all principalities and power and might and dominion. And every name that is named. So when he says every name that is named, is there any name greater than the name of Jesus? No. Because every name is in subjection to that name. Every situation, our problem has been lack of faith in the name. Every name is subject. Is, every name, cancer, every name is subject to the name of Jesus. 
He said, not only in this world, but also in the world that is com coming. And then if you go to verse 22, he says, yes, he's there. He said, I have put all things under his feet. Do you see that again? Under whose feet? The feet of Jesus. Everything is under his feet. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church. So our head is seated at the right hand of God. That, he says that, that our head is sitting and everything is subjection to him. And we learned last week that we are the body. Praise the Lord. And that Ephesians 2 we read. If you go now to the end, don't go, don't go there because I want to go to, the, to, to, the, to the today's uh, message. But it says that we are raised up together with him. Ephesians chapter 1. And you had it. Go to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. Let's read from verse 1. So it makes a yes from 1. 2, 1. And you had it quickened. Do you see quickened? It's the same as raised. Who were dead in trespasses and sins. Keep going. Wherein in time past, in the past, before we became children of God, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the earth. The spirit that now walks in the children of disobedience. This is our past. But keep going. Go, go to the... Yeah, and among whom we also had a conversation in time past. And we were by nature children of wrath, even as others. Yes? But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, well with he loved us. Even when we were dead in sin, had raised, quickened us together with Christ. Okay? Raised us up together. So when Jesus raised up, we were with him. We were raised with him. Yes? And what did he do? And had raised us up together. And made us sit where? Are you seeing it? Where are we sitting? Okay. Heavenly places. Do you see that? We are sitting with Jesus. That's our position. That's our position. Let no circumstances think, convince you otherwise. This is our position. And when we meditate on this and take our authority, things will begin to change. This is our position. Now, why is, why, how does it work? How is it that Satan has no authority on earth? Do you remember where we just read in Psalm 115 that God has given the earth to the children of men? Okay? Because of what is called the legal body. The legal body. What do I mean by the legal body? Now, when God gave the earth to the children of men, for anybody to have authority on earth, you have to be born of a woman. Praise the Lord. Everybody has to be born. That's the only authority you have here. Now, you know when the Bible says in there, when it says that you cannot be tempted by, by, by God will make a way out of every temptation. Satan is limited because he is a spirit being. God is also limited because God is a spirit being. Both of them can't do anything without cooperation of men. Praise the Lord. Both of them. Because it, God has already given the earth to men. So for God to come in, for God to come in, for even God to send Jesus, he has to have a legal standing to come in. Because Jesus is the Son of God. Okay? But there must be a leeway. So when Adam sinned, when Adam sinned, and gave, because it's Adam, is the first Adam that gave the authority to somebody else. Remember, Adam was not deceived. So he knew what he was doing. Adam was actually there with, with Eve. And who was giving the, if you go through that Genesis story, God told Adam, gave him the instruction, and then made Eve later. So Eve got the instruction of about the food, whatever, from Adam. And when I was doing this, it made a lot of sense to me because God called both of them, both man and woman, Adam. Adam himself named his wife Eve. God called them Adam. And this Adam word is very important because the son of man that Jesus is calling himself actually means the son of Adam. Praise the Lord. That is the meaning of that son of man. He's the son of Adam. So God called mankind Adam. So therefore God, he's still calling us Adam. There's nothing like male, female Adam or male. Yeah, it's, it's Adam himself that named the wife Eve. It's there in the Bible. Praise the Lord. Now, when this man that God has put in charge. You remember the blessing. Take control. Be in charge. In that blessing, he says, subdue the earth. Have dominion. Is that not so? Let's go to Genesis uh, 2. Is it Genesis 2? 
to 18. That's a blessing, a what God told man. Genesis 2, 18. You know, it says that you should have dominion over the, the blessing. Is it 2, 18? Praise the Lord. But in that authority that God gave man, because once God does something, God is not, God doesn't do like this and this. Today he changes his mind tomorrow. Even from the beginning of the world, every counsel of God will stand forever. And it is supposed to make you feel happy because it means that whatever God has proposed to do with you, it will come to pass. You are the only one that can change what God has planned. And today we are now learning that Satan is not a non is a non-factor. Is if you allow him that he will work with you. If you don't allow him, he will not have the authority over you. Praise the Lord. So now um, it's okay. I would, but when he told man, he says, "Have dominion." Okay. He said, "Multiply." Have dominion over the works of. Is there anything that creeps in the air in the sea? Is that also anything that moves? God gave man authority over it. He says, "Have dominion." He says, "Subdue the earth." What is subdue? Anything that is wrong, bring it, fix it. That's basically what God is saying. So God gave it to man. So when man gave uh, Satan the authority through sin, through what he did, now God needed a somebody. God needed to come back in. But how did Satan even deceive him? Did Satan come in his uh, true state? He had to borrow a body. He borrowed the body of a serpent, of a snake. Praise the Lord. He had to borrow the body of a serpent to deceive Eve. Now God needed a legal standard because if God comes anyhow, Satan will challenge him. And you know that God too, even God is righteous to Satan. Because God's laws are equitable. I don't know how I can explain it. If he said something to do, it has to be right. God is righteous. And God has to be fair to even the Satan he wants to remove. Why did God come back in? He has to find a man called Abraham. Praise the Lord. Now, when God made a covenant with Abraham, let's go to, let's go to, let's take some scriptures concerning Abraham. Uh, by the way, where uh, Adam named his wife Eve is found in Genesis, Genesis, uh, Genesis 3.20. And uh, if you quickly go to Genesis 5.20 before we go to Genesis 15. 5.2. Where we are saying, you see, uh, Adam named Eve, uh, Eve. And then it says, male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name what? Adam. Do you see that? He called their name Adam. So his Eve was named by the husband. Praise the Lord. Now let's go to Genesis 15. Because God was not looking for an entry back into the earth to have authority. Praise the Lord. Because nobody without a body, without being born of a woman, has right here. Because God has already established it. What do God do? Uh, Genesis 15. Genesis 15, 4 to 7. Yes. So, and behold, the word of the Lord came unto you and said, This shall not be your head, but he that shall comfort out of your bowels. God, that is God. Do you remember all the dealings of God with Abraham? He told him to move from his place. Abraham moved. And when God created a, a covenant with, okay, we'll read it here. It says, uh, Out of the bowels shall be your head. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now towards heaven and tell the stars. If thou be able to number them, and he said unto him, so shall your seed. I hope you see the word seed. It didn't say seeds. Okay? So shall your seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and God accounted it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought you out of all of the Chaldees to give this, this land to inherit it. Yes. I... Okay, yeah, it says, okay, now God, God now gave Abraham a male child. Praise the Lord. And he says, this male child, but before that, I remember they cut a covenant. They cut a covenant. And I've explained the meaning of covenant here. It means that what belongs to me belongs to you. What belongs to you belongs to me. That's what covenant is all about. Praise the Lord. It is total, I will take care of you. I will, everything that I have in my power. And I, I, I've, talked, I've taught us here that God deals with us according to covenant. Now, based on that covenant, God was looking for a legal entry to come, to come into the earth. Praise the Lord. What did God do? He asked his covenant partner for his son. That thing wasn't because, and if you know that God doesn't kill, praise the Lord. But why did God ask Abraham for his son? It wasn't just an ordinary test. Praise the Lord. It wasn't just an ordinary test. Remember? He was looking for a new way to come back in, to come back in. So when Abraham obeyed God, 
And remember that in Abraham's mind, Isaac was already. Let's go to um, Genesis uh, 19. Genesis 19. 19, 17 to 21. So, and it came to pass, when they had brought them forth and brought them, he said, escape for their life. Okay, this is another thing. But what I wanted to say, don't worry about it, is that when God brought, when Abraham was about to kill Isaac, the Bible says that Abraham, he, it was taken, even though he didn't finally slaughter Isaac, but God took that intention because he raised his hand. The Bible told us in Hebrews that Abraham saw Isaac raised from the dead. Is that not correct? He said he saw him raised from the dead. So as far as Abraham is concerned, this God that promised me that this child will be the... God had made a covenant with me. Abraham had trusted in God's covenant. So when God told him, the only son that will come, that that covenant will be established, give him to me. Abraham not believed God. That's why it is accounted to him as righteousness. He believed God so much that he's in his mind, he saw the resurrection of Isaac. Not that Isaac will not die. The Bible says he saw Isaac raised in a figure. In other words, he was trusting God so much that he said, this God that I have dealt with, who has been with me, who has fought wars with me, and I have been successful, I know that that God is worthy to be trusted. That if he's asking me this, he's going to raise him up. Because he said, in Isaac shall your seed be called. That he's going to raise him up and he's going to make him a father of you. Because he said, in Isaac shall your seed be called. And I'll make you a father of multitude. So, if God is asking me this, I know that God will raise him up. And that's what he does. So when he was even at the bottom of the hill as he was going up, he told the people, wait here for us. We will go and worship and come back. You will see faith in every step. We will go and worship and we will come back. Not I will come back. So Abraham trusted God. And that's why he is a father of faith. But you see, when he did what he did. Now let's go to Genesis 22. Genesis 22. 1 to 3. And it came to pass after this that God did tell Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, there I am. He said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom you love, whom you love, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering, upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose early in the morning, not later. You know, this is one of the things. Anything God tells him, he will do. A prompt obedience. Rose early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, Isaac and Isaac his son, and cleaved the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went into the place, unto the place, of which God has told him, keep moving. Move God puts four and there uh, to seven. Mm. Then on the third day, because it took a long time for the journey. As you know, they travel, they don't have like our means of transportation. So the, at every time, there was an opportunity for Abraham to go back, but he didn't. The whole world was depending on Abraham's obedience for God's plan to work. So, and on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide here, he here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Do you see that? And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spoke unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Keep going. And Abraham said, this is the prophetic. See, you can stop here. This is what I want. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. This is very prophetic. That is the prophet. That's why Abraham is considered a prophet. Praise the Lord. He provides himself a lamb for the Because it's, it's not only for the now. He has done, do you understand? He prophesied what will happen. And you know the lamb of God that came to take away the sins of the world. So they went both of them together. Now, he tied Isaac. When Isaac now realized his meal, it's, there's no other person. He raised his life. The Bible said that as, as far as Abraham was concerned, he has killed the son and he has seen him raised up. That is his faith, that God will raise him up. But God now says, no, 
Give, go down to the place where God says, um, now in blessing I will bless you because of what he says. Okay, and he said, let not your hand upon the Lord, neither do anything unto him. For now I know that you fear God. See, you did not withhold your son, thy only son from me. Now, you remember when I was talking about covenant, everything belonging to me, belonging to you. Because Abraham offered his son, because the Bible, as far as the Bible is concerned, Abraham has offered Isaac. Now, God can legitimately offer his son. Praise the Lord. So that made a way for Jesus to come into the earth, to take over, to come as a legal born of a woman. Born of a woman. Because the authority is given to the children of men. Praise the Lord. So when Jesus came, Abraham paved the way. Because of that covenant, you can't say you have no right, you can't do it. Now, have you ever wondered, when Jesus was in some places that the, the demons will be shouting at Jesus, we know who you are, the son of God. Do you think Satan tells the truth for, for no reason? Don't torment us before the time. They know. They know that the son of God has no right are you understanding? So basically what they are telling Jesus, do you actually have, who are you? We adjure you by God. Do you have the jurisdiction to, because the earth has been given to the children of men. Now, God on his side is wanting to inhabit you. That's why Jesus cannot come down and come and, start and pray for people to be healed. No. We are the legs. We are the hands. Go ye. Praise the Lord. He has given us the authority to do. Remember when we were sharing, I'm going to take some of the scriptures again. He said, behold, all authority in heaven, when he rose from the dead, he says, because I've taken it back from the enemy. All authority in heaven and on earth, heaven and earth, remember, heaven and earth, has been given to me. Therefore, go ye. Praise the Lord. So I give you that same authority. I delegate the authority I've been given to you. Jesus cannot do it. He can only do it through us. The same way that Satan has to possess people. You see, when they blow up planes and all that, and we say, eh, he's a mad person. He's not just a mad person. He's under somebody. Do you understand? He, because Satan by himself, he's limited to the children of men. That's why the Bible says that he is limited to the things that happen here. So he cannot just come in his spiritual form. If not, all of us will be dead in sleep. Think about it. Is that not correct? Because if he's a spirit, I don't see him, you don't see him, so he can just have authority and do what, but it's limited. Praise the Lord. So he can only do what he's allowed to do. And he needs a body. He needs a body. That is why all of us, God also needs a body. God needs a body, Satan needs a body to perform what he wants to do. Praise the Lord. Now, having learned that, Abraham made a way for God to come back in into the earth to correct the mistake, the first Adam. That's why Jesus was called the second Adam. The last, not second, the last Adam. If you remember, he's called there because there's no other Adam that is coming. And Jesus emphasized his humanity every time because I am the son of man. He said, judgment has been given to me because I am the son of man. If you remember, throughout the whole epistle, he's emphasizing the fact that he is the son of man. Praise the Lord. So when the enemy were saying, we know who you are, the only one of God, the son of God, they are basically telling him, why will you come and uh, be disturbing us? You are the son of God. You don't, you understand. But Jesus, the game plan was also hid from them. They didn't know how he's working out. That's why the Bible says that if the enemy had known the game plan of God, everything, he would have not killed the son of God, Jesus. And when they even know the game plan, when Jesus died, in the and then went to hell to take the keys from him. By that time, he already knew. But, so that's why God says that raising Jesus is from dead is the highest manifestation of his power, more than he did when he was created. Why? Because by the time Jesus has to, got up, has to uh, rise from the dead, the enemy has known. Because he has been three days in the, in the grave. Remember, he went three days in that hell and he took the keys from Satan. And that's when all the combat we are talking about, that he won it by conquest. So do you think that the enemy knowing now that, see, see what it is, so see how he, so he has got the key. And he couldn't resist giving him the key because he's taking it back. He won it. Now when he gave it to him, they marshaled all the forces to stop the resurrection. Because the resurrection will be a greater damage to them than Jesus even all the life. But the power of God. The greatest manifestation of that power is in raising Jesus from the dead. And again, it says that that same power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you and in me. 
and he says it to quicken our mortal bodies. He said the power that dwells in us, is that not so? That same power is inside me and you. So somebody that is not activating the power will be as weak. The Bible says that if a, a child is a child, it's no less better than a servant. Is that because he's still under two toes. They will guide him. They will tell you tell your children when to eat and when not to eat. Because, so that's why children of God that are still in baby stage and everything and are not, it's not helping because they're still under the tutelage. That's why they may not know their right from their left. And God wants us to mature. Praise the Lord. Now, um, our time is fast family. There's, I want to just take four scriptures about exercising that authority. Praise the Lord. Because a man of God uh, is Kenneth Hagin. He said that, um, that Jesus was revealing this authority to him. And uh, Jesus was now talking to him, explaining to him everything about authority, um, everything. And he said that there was a smoke in the room. Suddenly, a smoke covered everything. He can't even see Jesus. And then, he said that the voice of Jesus was getting fainter and fainter. Because a spirit came between him and Jesus, and the spirit was making noise and creating, you know, like we're creating a smoke and making noise. And as the noise was making yakati yakiti, he couldn't hear Jesus. So it's like initially he said, Jesus is going to do something about this thing. Because it's Jesus that came to be talking to him. So I'm sure Jesus will do something. So Jesus was just kept Jesus kept talking. While and he now felt that he's missing out most of the things that Jesus was talking to him. So, out of frustration, his own frustration, he said, in the name of Jesus, you know, I, I bind you in the name of Jesus. So he said, the spirit, the demon fell down and was whimping. So, and then it's still, that whimping, the that sound of something wounded and all, was still disturbing. So I could get out of here in the name of Jesus. So they said, run, like in terror. So, you know, like, he turned to Jesus, like, why didn't you do anything? You know, it was stopping you. Jesus said, I couldn't. No, the man of God said, no, no, no. You mean you, you wouldn't. You don't want to. He said, no, I couldn't. So, no, he said, no, you have to give me in the scripture. That you mean you cannot cast out. Do you understand? A demon that is stopping me from hearing you, you can't. He said, I could not. Not I wouldn't. He said, Jesus, you have to give me the scriptures. You have to just show me in the Bible. Where? Because this ups everything I've heard about your power and everything. And that's when Jesus gave him this, this four scriptures we want to share now. Praise the Lord. So, that place, um, the first place we read is that uh, Ephesians 1.20 and Ephesians 2.6. It says, um, set him at his own rather than in the heavenly places, and have raised us up together. So, Jesus told him, this is your position with me. Praise the Lord, you are seated with me far above them. So what Jesus told him now, he said, go to Matthew 28, 18. Matthew 28, 18. Jesus said, came and spoke unto them, saying, all power. I if you remember when I was speaking about this scripture. The first power is referring to authority. King James used both power and power. This first one is, he said, all authority is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Okay? Then he now told them, go and do some things. Praise the Lord. Then, in Mark 16, 15 to 18, can you put it up? Mark 15, 16 to, uh, Mark 16, no, Mark 16, 15 to 18. 15 to 18. It says, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And he that believeth not shall be damned. And this child shall follow them that believe. Jesus now brought him to this scripture. He says, do you see? After that, I give you um, power. All authority has been given to me. Therefore, I delegate the authority by telling you to go. Excuse me. And do these things in my name. Praise the Lord. That's Matthew. If you go to the end of Matthew, that's what that place is saying. Go and do these things in my name. Then this place, this place, it says, in my name, they shall cast out devils. It, Jesus told him basically that this is not for pastors or preachers. That a smallest child of God, he says, in my name, do you see that they shall cast out devils? Is that not authority over the devils? You shall cast out. That's the first sign of a believer. Casting out devils. And they will leave this part as if it's something big. Casting out devils. 
They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take us separate. I need to drink anything. So, which one is that? Jesus even emphasized to the man that the first thing there is casting out devils. Praise the Lord. So, again, Jesus took him to Colossians 1.13. He says that God has delivered us from the power of darkness. So we are already delivered out of the authority. Power, again, is misleading. It's authority. Praise the Lord. We have been delivered out of the authority of darkness. So Satan does not even have authority over us. Praise the Lord. Five, uh, uh, then um, resist. he gave him um, James 4, 7 and Ephesians 4, 27. James 4, 7, he says, Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. I remember when the same man of God said that when he prayed for somebody and, uh, um, and he looked to see if that person is showing physical signs of the demonic uh, deliverance. And Jesus, he said as he turned, you know, he said, try and see if, he told the man of God, the person was ill, very bent. He said, try and see if you touch your tools. So he said he left him because there are a lot of people in the line. And as he left him, he saw Jesus very looking furious, looking angry. It's like, he said, I said he will flee. That's what Jesus said. I said he will flee. The word says he will flee. So when you resist, what happens? He will flee. The problem with us is that we, we resist and then we start looking for, for signs. We start looking for signs. Oh, maybe, uh, you know, if, if you know how Satan uh, works, he, he works with circumstantial evidence to convince you that your faith is not working, that it's not happening. That's how he gets people. When Jesus rebuked that boy with the epilepsy, what happened? The boy now became as if he's dead. The thing now threw the boy right at Jesus' feet. But Jesus already knew his authority. He didn't go and start you know, praying again. He just asked the father, how long has he been with you? But that same thing Satan did with Jesus. He was doing it with the apo uh, disciple, uh, apostles. That's why they couldn't cast him. Because when he was manifesting so much, they felt their prayer wasn't working. And if you remember, it's not the first time they had cast out demons. Because they had told Jesus. Remember, Jesus had sent them out two by two to everywhere. And they came back and said, Jesus, even the demons are subject to us through your name. But... Sometimes, we are, if we are not careful, we'll be dazed by satanic manifestation, circumstantial manifestation. I have prayed, and it doesn't seem to be getting better. That's how he gets all of us. God will help us in Jesus' name. When we realize who we are and stand by our authority, he will not deceive us anymore. So, and there, Ephesians 4.27. These are the four places. Um, Matthew, Mark, Matthew, um, um, Mark, Matthew, um, James, and, uh, eh? sorry, neither give place to the devil. So, basically, Jesus, James, Peter, and Paul tell us to do something about the devil. So, there's no place in the New Testament, he says, who we'll ask the Father to come and deal with the devil for us. And again, God can use men of God. You know, that's how, how God helps people. Big ministries, like, you know, God, God will use uh, men of God, you know, and they pray, you go to their programs, you pray, and God, but God wants us to use our own authority. It, well, we know that our adversary, um, 1 Peter 5, 5, 7, say, be sober, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. I, I used to tell our church before that if you wait for six months before that, the, maybe before we have a Holy Ghost, um, is the Holy Ghost, fest, uh, what's that our festival, book? Of festival of Life? If you have started being sick in the, you will die before the six months is over. Praise the Lord. God wants us to use our authority. It's like using somebody's clothes all the time. Sometimes it will not fit. Sometimes too, and that's what happens. Even when they pray and you come back to your house, and the enemy dizzies you with the symptoms again. Most people lose their, lose their healing. I told us most people lose their healing based on second attack, not the original one. They felt better. They were healed. But when the enemy comes, when they come to their house, and they are staying in that same unbelief uh, environment and everything, the enemy will come with symptoms, and they will, not, uh, they will lose their faith. Praise the Lord. So God doesn't want us to be children anymore. God wants us to begin to use our authority. 
We'll stop prayer for today and we'll continue next week. So I don't know.